Hi, welcome to a new video about .NET MAUI and Telerik components. Today we will take a look at the image editor and the toolbar components. Before we start, I will say thank you to Progress Telerik for sponsoring this video. So if you like this video, subscribe and press the like button. And don't forget to go to Telerik.com and check out the great components from Telerik that I will show you now. So, let's go and open Visual Studio. So, let's start with the image editor. And as you can hear with the name, image editor is a component for editing images. So in this demo, I will take a thumbnail from YouTube because I will continue work with the app that I have done in the previous episode, that is the use that's app. So we'll take a thumbnail from one of my videos and we will load it in to the image editor. So the first thing we will do is of course creating an image editor. So to do that we need to import the Telerik namespace just like doing this XMLNS Telerik or you can call it whatever you want but I call it Telerik because it's the Telerik components. And then it will be schemas Telerik.com 2022 Samuel Maui. So let's go with that. So Telerik colon rad. Do you remember all Telerik components start with rad for rapid? So rad image editor. So and now we can load the image into here by setting source. And right now I have a um, property in my view model called image URL. So we'll bind to that. Binding image URL, just like that. And that is enough for starting the app. So let's do that. And we will run it on Mac today. So here we have loaded an image to it and we can set zoom level, for example, if we want to do that. So we go back here and we set minimum zoom level and we set that to 0.5 is at max zoom level to let's say 200 and we should now be able to pinch zoom this if we run it on an iOS app so let's open that and try out and now we have it here and we can do some pinch zooming wom, 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 wom. but is this really an image editor we just show an image and we can zoom to it uh, no, it's just a half of the image editor. It's a viewer. And to make this image editor, we need to add a toolbar. So that is what we should do now. So we go back to the code. And as you can see, I have a grid here with two rows. One with size outer and one that should cover the rest of the view. And that is this, the image editor. So let's do like this. We're adding a toolbar. Telerik. Rad image editor toolbar and then we need to reference the actual image editor and that means that we need to give this a name so x colon name image editor and now we go back here and say x colon reference image editor so now we have the toolbar here and then we can do some cropping. For example, we can say oval, click OK. And now we have cropped the image and we can rotate it. Boom, let's rotate David and we can flip David and we can do some adjustment. And now you can see here, my problem here too is that I have set uh, label for example to be white so it will not look that good on this view so but we can just go and change my labels so they are not white anymore uh, so we override this property just for now uh, and we say setter property text color value black 
and then I should go and turn off dark mode. Because theming an app is not what I will focus on during this uh, video. So let's focus on other stuff instead. But I will show you that it's just because of my styling we had a problem. So let's run the app again. So here we have David again. We can crop him again. And now you see everything looks much better. Uh, he can be oval this time and we can flip flap and adjust. Like you, for example, set tension, brightness, contrast. I think we should do like that. And he can be a blurb and or sharpen too. Okay, now we have edited the image like that. And of course we have redo, we have undo here. So we can do that. So, so this is the default toolbar. If you want, you can build up your own toolbar in the image control too. So let's show how to do that. So we will close the app and we will go back to the editor view. So here in the toolbar, we can do like this. Auto generate items, false. And now we can add items to it instead. For example, we can have the flip controls so we add them so flip image editor flip horizontal toolbar item yes thanks and then we do flip vertical so now we can run the app again and we should have only those two items so here we have david again and we can flip him horizontal or vertical or both shoop, 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 shoop. okay and of course you can continue to add more items if you for example want a separator between them you can do that too just add a separator to bar item just like that and now you can see that we have a separator there so if you want to style the toolbar items you can do that so let's go and create a resource dictionary and add some style for that ones and you can do this on a global level, of course. So in this resource dictionary, we create a style and uh, target type here for those flip horizontal and uh, flip vertical is button toolbar item. So we set that one, just like that. And now we can add some setters. So setter property, and here you can see all the available properties. So let's go with background color. And we set that one to blue maybe not the most beautiful color in this case but uh, it will be easy for us to see the difference so let's go and run the application and now we have those as blue so if you want to execute some of the commands programmatically you can also do that you don't have to add buttons to the toolbar you can do it just by code but to demonstrate that i will also add another button outside of the image editor toolbar. Yes, so we have something to trigger the code. So we will do that in the .NET MAUI toolbar. So we create a new item uh, with text blur. We add it to the toolbar. And this is not the image editor toolbar, it's the application toolbar. .add. So this is standard .NET MAUI stuff. So, and when we click that one, we can bind that to a click event, just like this. And now we have the image editor because we give that one a name and we can use the blur command that that editor have and we can execute that one. So let's do that. And of course you can do this for other things blur too so new blur command context and we set the blur to let's say 30 and now we go and run the app so here we have David in the image editor again, and now we have the blur button here up in the application toolbar. So let's go and click that one. 
And now we have a blurry David. So if you want to save this image, you can of course do that too. So what we need then is of course a save button. So let's go and replace this blur button with a save button instead. And then we can remove the blur thing here. So for example, if we want to save it on disk, we can easily do that. So path um, is file system dot um, current dot app data directory. That's the place where you should save data if you write it to disk. And then we go using var file stream. And then we do file, file dot create path. And of course we need a file name here also. So we do like this path is path dot combine. Always use combine and then it, you will be sure that it works on all platforms. For example, backslash uh, is used in path on Windows and on Mac it's just the regular slash. So we do like this uh, david.png. So and then we say path in there in create. And then we do just like this, await image editor, because that's the name that we gave to the editor and save async. And then we pass the stream, the file stream, and then image format dot PNG and image quality, let's say 0 0.9 there. Okay, it's just like easy like that. So should we see if this code works? Yes, of course. So let's set the breakpoint here. So we click save. And now we have a path here. So let's check that one. Copy it and then we go and open it in Finder. So here we have Finder, then we do go and then we go to folder. And we pass that one here. So here we have that library folder. And now if we continue, david.png should show up here. You can put it in a subfolder if you want to. Probably you want that, but uh, we did not do that. So let's continue just to see if this works. So path uh, david.png, okay. We have continued there, so open finder again. And here we have david.png. So then it's saved, but in original quality. So let's go and do some stuff with it. So you can see that we actually get the image saved. That the, so we actually get this the edited image saved. So let's remove the breakpoint. And we go here, flip the image, and then we press save. Okay, let's open finder. And now we open the David file again. And here he is upside down. Okay, that was the image editor. But if you want to use the toolbar without the image editor, you can do that. But you should not use the image editor toolbar because they also have a toolbar uh, component that you can use when you want toolbar without using the image editor. So here we go to the grid again, the empty grid because I removed the image editor. That's Telerik because we need to have a control from that namespace. So red toolbar, just like that, red toolbar. And now we can go and add toolbar items to here. So we can add a button, for example, so Telerik colon button toolbar item text uh, undo undo and if we want we can also add an icon to it and we're doing that by doing like this so telerik colon button bar item 
dot image source and here we put the font image source or whatever image source you want to use but Telerik also have uh, icons in their package so we can use that one in this case so a glyph and then we do x colon static Telerik colon Telerik font dot icon undo just like this and then we say font family because that's important when we're using font image source and again x colon static Telerik colon Telerik font dot name and we say size 60 for example just like that so let's go and run the app so here we have the toolbar and as you can see this one is blue and that because this resource dictionary is still here and that shows us that you style these buttons exactly as you did with the buttons in the image editor toolbar so we can remove this because did not look that good so here it is and it now it looks much better but of course you want something to happen when you click on the item in the toolbar and that is really easy to fix because you can have a command on the item so command and I have actually one in my view model and it's called do stuff come on just like that and the command it doesn't do anything right now so we go there and set the breakpoint so now we can click the undo button shoop and it hits the command and that means that we can do whatever we want but there are also other type of items that you can use in your toolbar for the full list go to the documentation on telerik.com because there you can find everything you need to know about this but for example, you can use a list picker button toolbar item. That was a really, really long word, so I will show you instead. So we go back here and then we paste one in here because you don't want to sit waiting for me to write all this code. But what you can see, we use list picker button toolbar item. We say text font family, and that means that you can select a font family and we have image source exactly as with the button toolbar item where we specify an icon and then we have item source here so that can be whatever you can bind to a view model or you can just define them in the sample like this so let's see how this looks and now we have a list picker button toolbar item here and here you can see the icon and if you click that we get a list of options so and of course you can add a separator here and that is exactly as you did in the image editor toolbar. So Telerik, Eric colon separator toolbar item, just like that. And now you can see that you have a small separator here. And one common thing that you often use in a toolbar is a toggle button. Let's think about the bold button in Word, for example. That is a toggle button. So we can use that one here too. So we will go here at the end of the toolbar and we will add a toggle button. And exactly with the other one, we can add an icon. So we copy that one, but we will change to toggle toolbar button instead of button toolbar item here, just like that. And let's see what icon should we have here. We can take icon bold just because we talked about that here it is and we can toggle it untoggle it toggle it yeah you understand but if we want to have a group of items we can also have that let's say we have an align options with three different left center right we can do that by creating a group because you should not be able to select all of them at the same time so we go back to the SAML 
and we create a group group toolbar item and then we add a radio button toolbar item to it the first one can be left then we add an image source Te tell uh, rig colon ray button toolbar item dot image source and then we copy this one paste it here and then we change to icon align left and then we can add two more of this and then and we say middle icon align center and right icon align right and of course you can use your own icons here as i said before so and now we have the group here and we can select left middle and then it unselected left and we can select right and middle is unselected so that was everything for today thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel if you not already do so press the like button and if you not have seen the other videos where i show telerik components Go and check them out and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.